welcome um, to our Herabilities Award um, announcement of the winners. As uh, Wilfried already uh, told uh, you all in the session before, um, I changed. I um, got dressed up with a yellow uh, T-shirt, which is under my um, my sacco. Um, it's the Light for the World International uh, logo, uh, which is uh, on me. I'm a board member of Light for the World, so I'm really happy to uh, be guiding you uh, through this award uh, session. And of course, I'm really happy to have my two guests uh, with me here in the studio. Uh, we have already heard them, but I want to uh, present them a little bit uh, more to you. Johanna Mank, uh, to my left, is with us. She's the head of rights and advocacy with Light for the World. Uh, welcome. Um, she has uh, strived and worked uh, very hard to include people with disabilities into our society. And Heide Marie Egger, she's uh, to my right, uh, she's from the Austrian uh, Disability Council and an, um, her Abilities Award jury member since uh, 2018. And uh, she has a lot of experience in the field of disability inclusion and uh, disability advocacy as well as uh, her expertise lies in the communication and PR department uh, with uh, these uh, topics. So I'm really happy to have them here uh, today with us. We're going to um, look a little bit um, on the history of um, the um, award and the Her Abilities Award. We're going to uh, see um, how uh, women uh, can be in leadership roles. We will discuss uh, this and uh, we will close the session with some words from Austria's first lady. We're really happy to have her as an amazing supporter um, since, uh, I think since the beginning, uh, she has been supporting us. And normally the award um, session would uh, be part of the Zero Project Conference um, closing ceremony. But um, this year, uh, we're happy to have uh, this uh, kind of award uh, session. This doesn't mean that we are uh, near the closing of uh, our uh, day. It's still some hours uh, to go, but we're really happy to have you all here. And let's start uh, with the beginning. Uh, Johanna, um, who and what is a light uh, for the world? Good afternoon um, to you all, to Andreas, to you. Um, light for the world is a global disability and development organization, enabling eye health services and supporting persons with disabilities, I would say in the most underprivileged regions of the world. How does the work of uh, Light for the World link to her abilities? Uh, Light for the World initiated this award. Uh, how does it link? It has strong links. What we try to do in our programs is to tear down barriers, unjust barriers, and really enable. And beyond the individual, we really want to change systems so that you know, it becomes fair. And of course, you never can walk alone. Uh, we work in partnerships and really try to build networks. So strong links to this award. How did it come around to initiate this around? How did it work? In our projects and in so many encounters, uh, we met wonderful, great, strong women with disabilities. And yet, around the globe, they are amongst the group who is the most marginalized. So we said, you know, let's bring them in front of the curtain. Let's shine light on these great successes, on women who have done so much in their life, in their work, and by having this award, which is called Her Abilities, looking at the abilities, we also want to change the perception of, of the public. And, of course, among these wonderful women, create networks for the future. How would you say uh, did it impact uh, the last award ceremonies, uh, the, the winners of the last uh, years? Uh, what was your impression? First of all, I mean, great. It happened in this house, actually. And the, uh, it was so vivid, and people met and talked and exchanged. And hearing the stories, you know, it empowers yourself. And I personally learned a lot. And what I know from all the former winners, they keep in contact, they exchange, so it starts to grow. And all of us, you know, can continue to really make that happen. So the goals that the Lightful World set out, uh, you can see them uh, uh, having their impact. And um, what you said about um, getting the recognition um, for, for the things that women with disabilities are doing around the world, that this is something that has inspired um, the one uh, a woman uh, who uh, started uh, the award and she created it, Yetne Bersh uh, Negusie. And we will hear uh, now what her thoughts are on the award and uh, why she started it. 
inspired receiving the Rights Livelihood Award last year and the Spirit of Helen Killer Award this year. I strongly felt of giving back something to the community, in particular to part of the community who often are sidelined, women with disabilities. My colleagues at Lights for the World exactly felt the same. That was a great thing. I wanted other women to feel as proud and as honored I was receiving awards. My name is Hathen Grimma and I'm one of the jury members this... for Her Abilities Award. We've created this award. So thank you, uh, Yeti, for your thoughts. Uh, you already uh, saw the next uh, video we will play it. In short, I just uh, will uh, present to you um, who we will see. Um, she's the jury member, Haben Jirma. She's the first deafblind person to graduate from Harvard Law School. And she's uh, absolutely a person you should uh, hear about. And as most of you will know, uh, she has since achieved uh, much more than uh, just uh, being on uh, top. And let's hear what she has to say about the award in this uh, short video. My name is Haben Grimma and I'm one of the jury members for Her Abilities Award. We've created this award to celebrate women with disabilities who are contributing and being role models within their communities. We want these women to inspire other leaders in their community. And this is uh, what it is doing. It is inspiring. It is uh, showing us what uh, women with disabilities uh, can do. And it um, has had some impact in the last uh, uh, three years. Uh, the award is in its uh, third year. And I want to show you some of the results and also some uh, pictures on our slides of what we have done in the last uh, years. So the results include uh, six uh, brilliant uh, laureates with amazing uh, stories. So the women that we could um, get into the spotlight and show their stories stories and uh, show what uh, they have done. Uh, right now you can see the winners of 2019 and uh, their achievements. Uh, it was just inspiring to meet them uh, last year, to have them on stage. Also from um, 2018, in total we had three award ceremonies in partnership with the Zero uh, Project Conference. And uh, what we really love, because it is important to get the message out, is that there was coverage of their stories, of their successes in media, including Reuters, BBC, Enable Magazine, and the Austrian Press Agency. So we were really able to get um, the stories and the messages out there. And by this help to build up a network of influential um, women with disabilities and help and inspire other women with disabilities to uh, take courage and uh, do um, have impact in their um, communities around them. So we're really happy that we were able to do that. And of course, um, it's important to have a prestigious uh, jury from Haben Jirma to the UK Paralympic champion, uh, Susanna uh, Rogers. Uh, she's a, a former swimmer. So myself as a Paralympian swimmer, I'm really proud to see that other Paralympians and especially swimmers are having an impact in their uh, community. Um, another one is the celebrated German writer and poetry slammer, Ninia Lagrande. U.S.'s uh, Judy Heumann, President Obama's first special advisor for international disability rights, um, to Ghanaian software engineer Farida Bedway, and of course our brilliant Heide Marie Ega. She's uh, with us uh, today in the studio. We'll come back uh, to her in a few uh, moments. And of course, we're really happy to see that what we are doing um, is uh, having an, an, an impact that we get um, enormous uh, nominations um, each year, 124 nominations from just a shy of 50 countries this year. This is a lot, especially when you establish uh, something new. So uh, we are really happy that with this we can uh, break down barriers in the public uh, perception. And uh, we can say that um, our awardees have held um, speeches at uh, big conferences. Um, and by this, um, uh, one of them is uh, the um, prestigious Women Deliver Conference in Vancouver, Canada. So it really has an international impact. But uh, now let's uh, get into uh, leadership um, for women with disabilities and talk about uh, this um, topic that is of great interest to us who want to see change in this field. So um, Heide Marie, um, what is the situation of women in um, leadership positions who have a disability? I think uh, firstly you have to see that 
there are not enough women with disabilities in leadership positions right now. And um, I think the reason there is for that is that when you look at the societal perception, um, they don't think that women are able to have uh, to be in a leadership position, and they don't think that people with disabilities are able to be in a leadership position. And when those two um, areas of discrimination come together, it's really hard. It's it's hard uh, a hard way, and they are facing intersectional discrimination. They are facing conscious and unconscious biases. And what I have to say that the people, the women now, um, the women with disabilities. Now, in these uh, leadership positions, they are usually the first ones. They are trailblazers, um, and they, are, they have to pave the way for the ones to come. And lastly, what I also see is that um, there is a young generation of women with disabilities coming who are going uh, a great way, and I'm excited to, to see what, what comes of that. So the first steps are always uh, the hardest for the ones uh, going them and, and walking them. Johanna, what is your um, input on uh, this uh, question of uh, women in uh, leadership positions? Um, the situation, if I have to put it in one word, it's grim. If I put it in two words, it's extremely grim situation. I have, I think, a good figure, and I need to read it out because I don't remember figures. I think um, we have slides as well, so um, that would be we good. can refer to we them. Can refer, we can refer to them because um, what we know that in 19, we have evidence from 19 countries, and it shows that only 2.3%, so which is really a, such a small number, really have positions as a legislator, as a senior official, or as a manager. And yet, these people would have so much to say and would also speak for themselves. So I think this situation really has to change. And uh, yeah, that's my plea. So um, I think that's what we really uh, want to achieve, especially if you think about the gender um, attribution, like 50-50, but only 2% of women um, are, 2% um, of women with disabilities are in a leadership uh, um, position. position. Yeah. So, other person are taking decisions uh, regarding uh, them, but they are not uh, in it uh, to say. So there needs uh, uh, to be a there change. There needs to be a change. Yeah, it, it's really, uh, I think the, it's so strong to say nothing about us without us. And we really have to take that seriously because we know in some countries up to 18% of the population are persons with disability. So this unbalance, and I know that women with disability would have the right to say and to know what needs to be changed. Um, Heidi Marie, you're a very uh, good example in your leadership uh, roles. Uh, um, and we also know, especially as people with disabilities, that uh, through hardships uh, come, uh, comes extremely uh, powerful uh, knowledge and experience and uh, we can put it to work for good. Um, is there any reason to believe that women with disabilities have an adventurous uh, edge uh, when it comes uh, to leadership? In my experience, um, women with disabilities, they have a big understanding what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are. And they have to because that's the only way they can be successful. And that's a good uh, basis to, to be in a leadership role, I think. And those women who are now in leadership positions, they came a long way and they have uh, build up a great strength and they have a big knowledge. So I think um, they are great in their roles and they can show others how it's done. And um, of course, this is important when you are in the workforce and when you are um, with other uh, people um, because the, the culture in the workplace uh, shapes how uh, women with disabilities are uh, perceived and how they can um, grow their influence over there. Are there some do's and don'ts uh, or some things that uh, we need to um, be careful of uh, in regard to this? You can see it on, on two ways. As a woman with disabilities, when you want to change the culture on the workplace, I would say have courage. Have courage and take up the space. Be strong. And also um, build a network of peers. 
because what I experienced is that there is a lot of empowerment in shared experiences with other women with disabilities and to, to build up a strong network and have a lot of power. And um, it, when you look on the employer side, I think it's important that there is an active encouragement, especially for women with disabilities, so they can be successful and that they have an, um, that the employers acknowledge the really hard path they, they had to go through. And of course, um, I want to say that women with disabilities have a lot to offer and they are a, a great addition to any um, company. Johanna, um, do you have some experiences uh, in this uh, regard as well? I mean, you have worked with a lot of uh, amazing uh, women with disabilities. And and taking from, from these experiences, um, really mirroring all what Heidemarie had said, it's really important to offer the opportunities, to be proactive about it. And um, you've already said, you know, this exchange and network, once sort of you, uh, you have the opportunities, and then uh, the strong communication and advocacy, talk about it, like the Zero Conference is talking about it. Bring it out there. And the only do not is just to do not nothing. Uh, that, that is the worst you can do, really take up every opportunity and encourage. Is this something that you've experienced that people would love to do something, but maybe out of uh, not having enough uh, courage or being afraid of reactions or that they're... Uh, uh, yes, sort of being shy, can I that? do it or can't? Um, it, it's, it's really sometimes uh, support people and push them and say, yeah, yes, yes, do it. And on the other side that maybe uh, some companies or some organization who would have the potential to offer jobs or to offer positions, don't do it because, you know, I don't know, they are just not used to diversity. Um, and then once they've done it, they said, yeah, that's great. Um, so it, it's really push, push, push, and it's not this one thing to do, it's an ongoing uh, effort we all need to do. One thing that is important, especially uh, you knowing Heidemarie from communications, to have visibility, to have uh, um, people going uh, forward um, so that uh, you can follow uh, them. Um, how do you say um, it, it would help um, with, with regards to women with disabilities in leadership roles, what do we need in our society so that other women can say, if, if they can do it, I will do it as well, and I will be the CEO of a company, I will go and be an advocate. Uh, what do you think uh, do we need? I think there needs to be a change in the societal perception, the perception on women, the perception on people with disabilities, because when you are a woman uh, with disabilities, you hear, f you hear from early on, Yes, you, you cannot do anything, you, you're uh, not strong enough, you have to take care, just not encouragement and go out there and go get it. So there we need to, to put a new perspective on, on it. And also I want to say that I think we need to have a much a more narrow uh, lens on diversity because to be honest, a man with disabilities is just not diverse enough when you are discussing the topic of disabilities. Okay, so in this uh, way, we need to uh, change a lot as well. One topic that um, is always uh, of interest and uh, one argument to, to change something is the pay gap between men and women. Um, are there any official um, um, Number. numbers and data around uh, the pay gap uh, between uh, um, men yes. and women with disabilities? Yes, and I can, uh, I think we have another fact sheet, luckily, uh, to help me on numbers. Uh, so we will uh, put it on. So we, we will put it on to, to help me here. Um, there is a pay gap. Um, and the Equality and Human Rights Commission, I think also in 2017, reported um, that, and that was from the UK, that there's a disability pay gap. Sort of the difference between what non-disabled and disabled workers earn both men and women are 13.6%. So very unfair. And then if you think that only a few percent of women earn, and usually women are even be below, so you can think on how little wages women do get. And this has implications. So this, uh, um, <laughs> they follow a lot of things that are implicated with uh, making less money than other peers, right? Exactly. It's, it's, I think it's the self-esteem and also sort of you also need to learn your living 
uh, and sort of you need to support the families you have, you need to, uh, and then you have the right for the same pay. You know, this is not, I would really say that's a human right to work, and it's a human right also to, to get the same amount for, for, what you, for what you do. Have you experienced uh, this in your work with Light for the World in the, um, in the countries that uh, you and we are active in? Uh, I would say as we work with the most underprivileged there, we usually talk about to get a job. Uh, that's the first step. Um, so um, that, that I would say is, is the main, because most of the people uh, in the poorest country dream about having any benefit or any job. Uh, and yes, what we can do is then to say everybody gets the same. What I also would like to add one point in order to get to a job is how important it is to start early with good education and inclusive education where we all learn to learn and live together. And I think that because you were talking about how then uh, people are not seen as, um, you know, in, in, in the way we would like everybody to see in, in our abilities. And I think to have a joint inclusive education from early age on, from kindergarten on, would make a real change for, for our later lives. So this is some very uh, great advice. Uh, uh, yep. Thank you for uh, your input uh, and uh, thank you for uh, your experience and sharing it. Uh, we will now go on uh, to get some um, other advice and we want to um, uh, thank uh, the um, nominees uh, for uh, giving us uh, this advice. Uh, we are delighted to have got, as I already uh, said, 124 nominations uh, from over 50 countries around the world. So, and we know that there are amazing women everywhere. This is the goal, we want to reach them all. And we asked them, uh, one of the barriers to career success many women with disabilities face is a culture in the workplace. Uh, could you share your top do and don't uh, tip when it comes to changing the culture around you? So this is the question that we as have asked them. And now we want to share uh, directly with you um, the advice uh, we got uh, from them. And uh, we will um, put in the first uh, slide uh, from Georgine Auma Obura. And uh, she advised us on um, doing... Um, something that is very important, um, do uh, communicate, um, don't um, expect overnight a change, don't dictate, and do uh, make a teachable moments. Uh, so uh, thank you, Georgine, for uh, this uh, very amazing um, advice. Uh, we also have a second advice from Becca Laurie. Hector, um, she uh, gave us uh, the, the advice that the culture in the workplace or lack thereof is exactly why I eventually chose entrepreneurship. As an autistic woman, my blunt, honest speech was always seen as rude rather than having any value. Speaking directly and saying what you mean is not rude to aut autistics. It is kindness. Do be you in the workplace. So please be you in the workplace. And our uh, third advice uh, from one of our uh, nominees, uh, Kaeli Mikroft, she uh, said, uh, do remember that each disabled person is unique and has unique accommodation needs and there is no one size fits all solution. This is something that we have uh, heard um, in the conference a lot, so we need to, to uh, take this advice uh, very seriously. And don't make plans to accommodate disabled people without disabled people, so nothing about us without us. Thank you to Kaeli um, for this um, advice as well. And now we're uh, gonna uh, go into um, the next uh, part of our award uh, ceremony and we will watch uh, a short video about the award. In a world full of barriers. For minorities, for women. For people with disabilities. There are women with passion. Empowering adults. Women with dedication, fighting for the right of entire communities. Women with exceptional talents. Never afraid to speak up. We are advocates, doctors, educators, business women, artists, and many more with outstanding professional achievements. But too often, 
our successes are less visible. Our stories remain unheard. It is about time for society to change its perspective and shine a spotlight on the achievements of women with disabilities. The Her Abilities Award honors the work of women with disabilities. Supporting our fight in breaking down barriers for generations to come. Very inspiring and very uh, passionate uh, to see that we can drive uh, this change with this award. So um, the um, nominations uh, came in and we have a wonderful uh, jury. Um, we have a slide on that as well. And um, they decided out of all the nominations that we have uh, got um, how, um, who has won. We can see our uh, jury members here and Heidi Marie is one. Um, of the jury members. Uh, could you tell us, and especially to all the nominees who are with us and are uh, waiting to see who has won, how the jury work uh, looks like and um, how do you decide on the winners? At first I have to say it's amazing to get to know all those stories of women with disabilities from all over the world. And if you get this email with the nominations, it feels like Christmas and you open a present full of awesomeness. So usually when the nominations close, uh, we get an email and we read through all those nominations. And then we, we start to evaluate those nominations on, on three um, areas of consideration. The first is impact. So to what extent um, this person has achieved excellence in her life, in her field of work. The second layer is recognition. So is this story um, untold or underrepresented? And the third layer is relevant. So is, it, um, is, is this nomination um, important uh, for current rights or a discussion on, on a social current debate? And then we have another layer of uh, consideration which is balance within those nominees. And yeah, I have to say, it's not an easy task to choose. It's, it's hard work, but it's a great pleasure and a great honor. And uh, we will uh, see the results uh, of this work. Uh, thank you very much. Um, some facts uh, for the nominations. Uh, we have received 124, as I already told you, in three categories. Um, 57 of them were in the category of rights, 40 nominations in health and education, and 27 nominations in arts, culture, and uh, sports. And um, the nominations came from uh, 48 uh, different countries, such as Malawi, Italy, Palestine, Argentina, Uganda, Haiti, and many, many more. And uh, most of them came from the United States, then from India, and then from Nigeria. So um, there is uh, still some, some heavy weight on some countries, but uh, we hope that there will be more from other countries as well in the future. But now we are uh, very eagerly um, waiting to know who the winners are. So let's start with the first uh, announcement, the first uh, category. Heide Marie, um, you have the honor uh, to uh, present uh, the winner. So you will um, read the description and then we will uh, go into the video presenting the winner of the category of rights. She is an amazing role model and a smart business businesswoman who is using her knowledge to educate and encourage others in a unique way. She believed that everyone has to be heard, and our reaction towards the disabled is the only thing that makes the difference. Her work on changing society's perception towards disability, standing for human rights, and her dedication to disability and human rights is what makes her unique.
It's an absolute privilege to be named the winner of the Her Abilities Award in Rights for 2020. Uh, in fact, I feel quite overwhelmed. Um, but it's also important to acknowledge that this honour is not about my work as an individual, but the tireless efforts of a global community who have paved the way for the realisation of my rights as a woman with a disability. You know, I can only do what I do because of those who have supported, encouraged and believed in my work and the work of the Donald Beasley Institute and the Lucy Foundation. And for this, I am eternally grateful. An inclusive society for me is one that values and celebrates our community, the disability community in its entirety. It's one that upholds our civil and political human rights, as well as our economic, social and cultural rights. It's also a society that unreservedly justifies the quality of the implementation of our rights. Growing up, I didn't see many people like me in positions of power or leadership, and this led to feelings of loneliness and a lack of confidence, I guess, in my ability to affect change. So I began to actively search for allies working in the social justice space. So other women and people with disabilities, marginalized populations, people with lived experience of injustice, indigenous persons and others. And I soon discovered that I was, in fact, standing on the shoulders of giants and journeying alongside an infinite number of passionate, driven and experienced social justice and human rights warriors. And it was then that I realized that I am not and I will never be alone on this journey. The achievement I am most proud of is contributing towards a shift in thinking where the lived experience of disability is no longer considered a weakness, but a strength. Uh, I think for too long, the knowledge of people with disabilities has been subjugated and considered inferior to the knowledge of professionals and experts, people without disabilities. I'm incredibly honored to be considered as having expertise in disability rights, not only because of my qualifications and not despite my disability, but because of my experiences as a woman with a disability. Women with disabilities belong. We belong in the room, at the table, in the conversation, in negotiations, and where the decisions are being made. We belong just as we are. You do, and that's the reason why we're doing uh, this. Congratulations to winning uh, the award, uh, Dr. Robbie Francis Watini. I hope I pronounced it uh, right. Uh, thank you very much for your work, and we are really um, happy that um, you have uh, won, uh, and congratulations to that. Um, let's move on to the next uh, category. The winner in health and education is? She saw her true abilities and utilize them in empowering others. She saw her potentials and embraced her differences and didn't let anything stop her from de dreaming, believing and achieving. And the most influential thing that she has accomplished is giving back to society. She shows the success of deaf teachers and through telling the stories of other people with disabilities, she paves the way to inclusion. My response to when it is uh what uh uh ability uh what I want in health and education 
to call me a organize their program and they have opportunity. They are happy. Me too. Happy thing. Very, very fulfilled. My advice for women with disability is that we should not or oh, alas, but we should try to make every effort to look for opportunity to develop our city. Maybe we can work many things so that we can get a respect that we that that belong to us. We should not stay in one place or be reliant on man or take society to help us. But we ourselves have for opportunity to develop ourselves and value to ourselves all the time. Don't rest. Don't give up. Don't stay in one place. But move, move forward. Don't give up is something that uh, we should all take uh, from uh, this uh, speech. Uh, congratulations, uh, Bernie Oyeleke, um, for your award-winning um, nomination in the category of education and uh, health. And uh, please uh, note that the captions that you have uh, seen in the video were a summary of what uh, Bernie's uh, signed, and uh, she provided them uh, herself, so um, just so you know, it was a summary. So congratulations again to winning this award. And now let's uh, transition to the last but not least the category of arts, culture, and sports. And the jury decided once again who the winner is, and she is? She is not a quitter. She had the desire to prove people wrong. She didn't believe that her disability could stop her from achieving her dreams. Instead, she saw her disability as a challenge that opened up unique opportunities to many in need. Although she faced hard things, she realized that they can't stop her, but they bring out her courage and strength. She shows that experiencing a bar barrier can make you a fighter to tear down that barrier and trailblaze the way for other women with disabilities. Bu ödül benim için çok kıymetli. Ee, sanki emeklerimin karşılığını almış gibiyim ki karşılık beklemeden. Mutluyum, onurluyum, gururluyum. Keşke orada olabilsek ve bir arada e, sarılıp bu mutluluğu birlikte yaşayabilsek. E, ama çok mutluyum. Hepinize çok teşekkür ederim. E, dünyada Ülkemizde engelli kadınların ya da engelsiz kadınların yaşadığı sorunlar bence yok. Bence sadece kadın olarak yaşadığımız sorunlar var. İş dünyasında kadının misyonu erkeğin misyonuyla terazi bir şekilde karşılaşırsa bırakın engelli kadınları kadınların sorunu ortadan kalkacak. Biz kadınla kadına cevap verirsek ve birbirimize destek olursak O zaman e, bizi asla kimse durduramaz. Çünkü biz birlikte güçlüyüz. Benim için en büyük engel e, eğitim düzeyinde yaşadığımız sorunlardı. Ama ben o sorunlara farklı farklı yollardan içine girip istediğim eğitimi 
almış bulunmakta olan şanslı kadınlardanım. Ve şimdi eğitimin bile bize engel olamadığı birçok alanda ve dünyada sesimizi duyuruyoruz. Türkiye'de en çok gurur duyduğum şey şu anda tiyatro bölümünü okuyan gençlerin varoluşu. Bunun için çok mutluyum. İnsanlar önce tekerlekli sandalyeme alışmak için zaman kazandılar. Daha sonra mavi saçlarıma. Ama en çok beni ilgilendiriyordu saçlarımın nasıl gözüktüğü. Tekerlekli sandalyemle dans ederken o ışıl ışıl parlayan mavilik bana umut oluyordu. Çünkü benim umudum ezberlenme etkisinde. Engelli kadınlara şunu söylemek isterim. Kadın kafası hep umuda açılan bir kapıdır. Lütfen asla ve asla pes etmeyin. Bugünler bitince umutla kucaklaşmak dileğiyle. Ee, en çok dileğim ve arzum bugünleri unutmamak. Arkamızda bırakmış olacağımız bu zor günleri ve özgürlüğümüzün tadını çıkartmak. Evet. Birçok projede, birçok organizasyonda yine bir arada olmak ümidiyle. Hoşçakalın. Thank you very much, Gamze Elibol, and congratulations on winning the award in the art, culture, and sports category. And um, I congratulate all the three winners, but I think there is one special person that can do that way better than me. So let's hear our special congratulation message. I will be speaking only around the last, but can somebody tell me if my camera is right? Uh, uh, I, I see something like really dark. blurry and gray right now. I can't, I can't okay, really then I will, let, let. So I think we have a mix-up in the channel. Um, they're trying to input uh, the video message. Obviously, we were in the other channel uh, version. Um, until we will um, get the video message that we have prepared, there was uh, a question on the session uh, chat which of course we are uh, going uh, to answer, Johanna. We were asked uh, why uh, is the moderator a male and not a female? Oh, I think we have the video, so let's uh, see the video right now. Dear ladies and gentlemen, all around the world, women with disabilities face barriers others don't have to. They experience double discrimination, which means their leadership and achievements are often ignored while their successes are hidden by subtle, and sometimes not so subtle, discrimination. Yet, there are many women with disabilities in Austria and around the globe achieving brilliance in their work and lives. Thank you, Light for the World, for bringing to our attention the very worthy winners of the Her Abilities Award series and their major achievements. Last year, I had Diana to welcome the 2019 Her Abilities Award winners at the Hofburg in Vienna. Mezun Zaid, Niguyen Tivan, and Dr. Lisa Kopinen. This year, in the extraordinary times of a global pandemic, which prevents me from meeting them in person, I want to congratulate the winners of the Her Abilities Award 2020, Bernice Oyeleke, Dr. Robbie Francis Vaitini and Gamze Elibol. From the classroom to the theater stage to the UN corridors of power and the coffee business, you are changing the world. My deepest respect and congratulations. And ours as well. Thank you to Doris Schmidow, the first lady of Austria for congratulating our award winners. We give uh, those uh, congratulations uh, from her to you and we are really excited to see what you will do next and how you will impact your communities and change the world and the visibility and the perspective on women with disabilities. Thank you for your amazing work. We will now take uh, a few uh, minutes uh, time to look into the future and also answer the short question that I already announced. Johanna, uh, why is the moderator um, a male and not a female? You can answer uh, this yes. question. Before I say that, also from my side, really congratulations, wonderful winners, and you are the very best. Why are you here? You're a male feminist, and you probably, no, I mean it seriously, you can speak to male 
to other peers uh, and reach them. We as women, we speak out, we are here, and we need the diversity in everybody to do that. So that's why you see this diverse panel here. Thank you for that. And uh, we were asked uh, where the audio description videos, um, uh, the audio description of the presentations of the winners, uh, we, you, can, you will find um, some way of uh, accessible information to the videos on the website of um, the Her Abilities Award. And of course, you will find more information on our amazing winners on the website. So uh, go and check out uh, the information and we're looking forward to seeing you uh, dive in deep into to our winners. And Johanna, let's uh, have a look on the future um, of uh, this amazing award. What will await us? What will wait? Wait is the right word. We will take uh, probably a year of a pause. We need to think strategically on how to continue. And we also need to look for resources. This award is growing, hence resources are needed. And we will, and hopefully in a year from now, come back stronger and continue with the award. So I invite all of you, all attendees of the Zero Conference, to come up with ideas, talk to us. If you have ideas, please approach us. We will and we want to continue, but with a pause. So we uh, want to uh, also hear from you, um, take the opportunity to contact if you have ideas, if you have um, things that are on your mind uh, regarding this award. We really see the impact of it. Um, all um, the nominees uh, were under 40 uh, years uh, this year. We got some leadership tips and insights in the session uh, today. And uh, we also asked our nominees uh, on the impact of the future, especially around COVID-19. And we are going to look uh, at some uh, things that they have uh, told us. Uh, we have prepared uh, one slide that we are going to put on right now to see how the nominees uh, see um, the future and uh, COVID-19 in a post-pandemic world. And Janice Jackson is saying, during, co during COVID-19, many people have experienced issues that are normal in the lives of people with disabilities. Some of these issues include isolation, hunger, unemployment, and health problems. My top hope for the post-pandemic world is that people who have temporarily experienced these issues will be more empathic and willing to help a minority who lives with them daily. So we hope that uh, our experience in the pandemic will have some uh, positive uh, changes and we hope that was Janice uh, Jackson has uh, told us will uh, come to uh, pass. And we have uh, um, another one from Sieglinde um, Altreiter. Um, she's saying, um, my hope is we will be more mindful of ourselves, our fellow human beings and nature. Uh, we will uh, try to uh, put the slide on to uh, see it. Otherwise, you have uh, heard it uh, from me. So this is our hope that we will be more um, mindful. We will um, take care of our fellow human beings and, of course, of our nature. And this is uh, something that we all hope that we can um, put in practice. Thank you for uh, those um, outlines on the future, looking at the future. And Heide Marie, um, some uh, closing words on the uh, winners, and then we will um, end this session. What are your thoughts? I also want to say congratulations to, to the winners, and I hope to get 300 nominations in 2023. So uh, thank you for um, this wish. We wish it will be like this. We, we wish that you will um, keep supporting the award. You will keep supporting women with disabilities, empowering them, giving them opportunities to change the world. And we have seen what impact they can have. I was honored to host uh, this session. I was honored to have you all with us, all um, the, the, the whole audience, also all nominees, and of course, our amazing winners. We wish you all the best. We are looking, really looking forward forward to see what you will do in the future. And uh, with this, thank you for our guests in the studio.